Right, I've just got over the stile there. I've left Piney Slights. It's quarter past four. I've got less than an hour to get to the bus stop. I've got about 50 minutes. Uh, no, 45 minutes to get to the bus stop. 45 minutes. I always allow 30 minutes to go in, going down here. And um, most of the time, it's fine. There are two routes down. There's a more bumpy, jumpy route down. Or well, there's the one that goes off around the edge. Um, which is less bumpy, less slippery, but it might be slightly longer. Hear all the birds twittering. You can see spring is coming. This will be my first video for 2021 in this part of my walks over this way. I think I can hear creatures, but I don't know if they're going up or down. So at the moment, I don't know what these are like for grip. I'm all right at the moment, but you've still got to be careful. I'm probably going to go that way because it's prettier. It's less strain on my knee because I fell off a stool two years ago landed badly on my knee and it's never been the same since probably knees aspirating um it's all right it's working but you know you're aware of it i'm aware of that knee and it's slightly swollen yeah i can see people with a small creature going down the so i'll, I'll do the alternative route Looks like it's pretty this way. This is going down the wood side of the gorge, down to the village of Cheddar. And you can see all the green starting to come out. The last time I would have walked here, it would have been autumn. And, uh, and I have still got that video, and it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. So if you want a comparison, anyone, all you've got to do is go on YouTube and go back six months to the one of my cheddar walks. I don't know what it'd be called. It could be the Velvet Bottom Circular or something like that, you know. But that would include me still having to come back down here. A lot of my walks always end up with me coming this way. Either here or over there. Unless I'm doing the walks in reverse. Then I would end up at Winscombe, Shipham and all that. Round that way. Now I've got time, I know I can just gently plod down this route because I, I, it's not half past yet, half past is the deadline for the start of the descent, it's the deadline. Yeah, so this is Sheila on the 16th of April 2021, the day before the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral at Windsor Castle. He's, uh, he's been lying in rest in the private chapel. I don't know if he got moved to the... Here, but no, he's going to be moved to the um, St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle during the ceremony, the procession will take him that route. Then um, his coffin will be carried into the, by the soldiers, will carry him in. And he'll be placed on a, this marble slab. This marble slab has got a mechanism um, which lowers the coffin down into the royal vault where the Queen Mother is, where the King George the, the Sixes and his, the Queen Mother and all, and all that lot are down there in their vaults. And Duke of Edinburgh will be joining them. It's all rather creepy, isn't it? 
I got family, you know, in church, buried under the church, the Stuttvilles. They're under the the floor in, in St Mary's Church at Dulham. It does give you a bit of creeps knowing your ancestors are down under the ground, you know. Even when you visit a, a just an ordinary grave, like my oak graves in Borough Green in Cambridgeshire. Um, I know they're under there, you know, Edward Oak, who died in 1852. He was a farmer and the local innkeeper of the Bull Inn at a very quintessential village called Borough Green in Cambridgeshire, um, which is now very, well, it's a very posh place, you know what I mean? Um, farmers' cottages cost millions. Um, you have, you've got the village green, you've got the, the pub still, the same pub that my ancestors looked after and ran. Um, it, it's a weird feeling when you go to these places, you know, where you hadn't known the ancestors a long time ago. And uh, you know that when you go inside the church, the font is where many got baptised including my great-grandmother, Mary Ann Oakbrooks, who I call my gatekeeper. She was baptised in Borough Green. Most of her other siblings were baptised just up the road in a village called Brinkley when they moved. Her parents moved to Brinkley. <sighs> yes, I find it... I love Family Tree, you know, I really do. And I've been doing a lot on the royals because... Because I've gone back with my great-grandmother, I've managed to go back a long way, uh, connecting up with royal connections. And one of the big main shared, one of the big main shared royals is Matilda of Huntington, who married secondly David I of Scotland. And the Queen has her own tree, that she, her own royal tree that she, she or others have done connect us to Matilda of Huntingdon. She takes a very quiet role, a bit, you know, she, she was, um, I don't think she was a queen. She was a bit like the Duke of Edinburgh. She was a queen consort. Now, when I went to Dunfermline Abbey to see Robert the Bruce Grave and David the First and his mother, David the First and his mother, both saints, I asked them in the record office where I spent some time talking in there telling them about my tree and everything and they said that Matilda was actually buried with 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 her husband she was buried with David the first in Dunfermline Abbey but if you look at a lot of sources they say she was buried at Schoon well they did live at Schoon Palace this is where all the royal kings and queens were uh, crowned. Not all of them. Some have got their burials over at uh, Iona, and I've been there as well. I've seen all that as well. Um, but when I said to them, and they went and checked for me as well, I said, is she at Schoon? Because there was an old graveyard there, and I did find a couple of old tombs. Really old, wibbly-wobbly ones. But they said, no, she was buried with David the first. I can't remember um, who died first out of the two of them. I mean, it could be that if she died first, which I can't remember, she, she might have been buried at Schoon at the time. And then when he, but he would have wanted her with him. She, she was his only wife. He never married. She had a first husband, a much older man, that she was forced to marry by William the Conqueror. Um, Simon St. Liz, who built Northampton Castle and church there, uh, and who was a crusader. Um, Matilda's mother, Judith of Delens, did not want to marry him. So William said Matilda would have to marry him. Um, he was a much older man, and she did have some children. Obviously, I come from that group, Matilda and Simon. But I've got half connections going down. I've got other connections that are full with the Queen going through another branch because they all married into each other. But basically, when I'm going down through David the First, he was like a stepfather to my lot. But any children he had with Matilda were my halves. 
So in, I am connected to them. All the Bruce's, all the James's. And it's all been done very thorough by the own, by the royal family themselves. <sighs> Matilda hasn't spoken of a lot, not that Matilda. There was a Matilda and Stephen in the anarchy period who are mentioned a lot. Um, they are all connected to Matilda though. They're all connected to David the I um, and William the Conqueror. In fact, that Matilda was, Dave, was William the Conqueror's granddaughter from his son, Henry I. Henry I, if he had a son, he must have died, I think. I can't remember the, if he died in a sailing trip. Or, but Henry wanted Matilda to become queen. This is another Matilda. Lot, there were lots of Matildas, by the way. It was Ian name. Like Williams and Henrys and Edwards and Jameses, Matilda, Maud, they were very dominant names back in time. And it's funny because my own mum was called Matilda, and I think now, when I think of it now, I think to myself, oh mum, if you'd only you known what a special name you've got, you know? It's like it's been passed on, you know? It's. I never really liked the name Matilda, actually, because I don't think my mum likes it. Because she said they used to call her Matty, and she didn't like that. And she, so they ended up calling my mum Tilly, which she preferred. Um, so from my mum, I suppose I didn't like the sound of the name, because she, she didn't like it. Just shows you how, when you're walking and reflecting, how the conversation can go completely off track. I have got no idea until I listen back to this video why I've got onto this subject of, um, oh, I know, Duke of Edinburgh. Yeah, he, in, he, looking at the tree, is my 25th cousin, twice removed. Exactly the same as the Queen. Because they both share Victoria. And Victoria is my 23rd cousin. I can't remember how many times removed. She might not be removed at all. can't remember. I've got it all written down. So I just started digging around a bit. I thought I haven't really expanded much on the Victoria and all that lot. I've done mainly further back in time. But once Duke of Edinburgh died and I realised he's, he's the same distance as Queen Elizabeth to me, I thought, oh, I'm going to dig a bit more around in this tree. And it's really interesting. A lot very interesting indeed, actually. Um, that's why I'm, I'm sort of doing a lot on that at the moment. Of course, it, so some people say, oh, that's all, that, none of that is true, Gina. That's all fantasy. But if someone, come, if a celebrity were to come on and say, oh, well, we've found these connections, they would say, gosh, you hear that? You know, but because oh, ordinary person like me uh, has been studying the tree in depth for quite a long time, 30 years, <sighs> you know, and I've done it properly. I've, I've used all the tools that you need to do the research, <sighs> followed the rules, done the verification, done the field work and the footwork. And I believe what I found is right. My mum always used to say to me, so someone must have said it to her, we come from finer things. She always used to say that to me. And she said, you can all tell Sheila by looking at our fingers. We've got long, slender fingers. And she used to love visiting old mansions and, and castles and things. She was intrigued by it all. Because... My great grandmother, Mary Ann Oak Brooks, had probably told us things that she would have known. But of course, people didn't really absorb it or pass it on, or you know, it was just like we only heard this tell. You know, it goes down that sort of route, like a legend or a fantasy. But when you start digging around, and you can easily go back 500 years, easily. Henry VIII made sure of that. Every birth, marriage and death had to be recorded. 
<sighs> so folks, we're nearly at the end of the walk. I can just see the reservoir. I've kept the camera rolling and um, I'm hoping to get that five o'clock bus. If not, I'm going to have to drift around for an hour. I'm sure I'll find something to do. I could do with a cold drink of cola or, or oranges. I really fancy something cold like that. Oh, they've put a gate on there, look. Right, over and out for a minute. Over and out.